Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another course vlog here from Mission Hills. This is the North Course, the Gary Player design, and you're gonna be watching the back nine today. Please don't forget to smash that like button down below and I'd love to have you subscribe and we'd see you back here every week for another course vlog. Let's take it out there. The back nine starts with a shorter par four and despite that water hazard down the right hand side, the fairway is quite generous, as is most fairways here on Gary Player's course. You're going to have a few bunkers down the left and those humps and bumps down the right like we saw down the front nine. Into the green, there's going to be that trap which sits very low as compared to the green, a good four or five feet below the green. And it's a two-tier green. Front left is very low and the back is a little bit higher. We're going to be facing a back hole location today. With that fairway bleeding off to the right, it just sat perfectly out there for my cut, aimed right down the left-hand side of the fairway and let it bleed. This fairway's got a little bit of a cant to it, but I was up on the top tier. Pretty much a full sand wedge for me here, but that pin was sitting on that back little tongue up on that shelf. I just wanted to make sure I got it up there, and with this fringe sitting the ball nice and fluffy, I thought I could chip this one in. You just gotta see those chips rolling in like a putt and sooner or later one of them might drop. The 11th hole here is one of my favorites and a great risk reward par 5. You see the landing area there is a big wide area for most and if, as we go further down, this lake extends all the way down the right-hand side and ends up cutting the fairway and making the approach to the green aerial. So here on your second shot, you got those trees on the right to deal with if you're going to go for the green. So hopefully you have your ball positioned right if you got the distance to get there. If not, you got a plentiful layup area here and not much trouble to deal with. Into the green, it's a narrow green, and another one that has a multiple tiers to it. I believe there is three here, and we're gonna be facing that front flag. Just had to trust that cut because that fairway was nice and wide out there. I got a good soft bounce in the fairway and it rolled out just here into the fluffy stuff, but on a straight line on the right side of those trees, it was 245 to clear the water, 257 to the flag. For me, that's all I got out of a two iron. And when you try to hit it a little bit harder, I tend to yank it a little bit and it flew the distance it needed to, but it was up here on this bank. I had to play this delicate chip shot down the bank, down to the frontier, and down to the flag. Got one to sit here about eight feet away and had a nice look here for birdie. There we go, able to roll that one in, get it back to even par, and we're on to a nice short little par three. The shortest one on the course, in fact, and it's got another tiny delicate little green, very, very narrow. That hole location here is different than you see. We are facing a middle hole location. That nine iron was not a good shot for me. A tug dead left into the fluffy stuff here once again. The Bermuda is sitting nice and lush even though it's all yellow. There's plenty of it and you will get a Fairly decent lie, depending on what you see, but you know what? Some of those lies will sit down, and you'll just have to hack it out the best you can. Just didn't hit that putt good enough. Had to take the bogey after the previous hole's birdie. Man, that was really rough. Not exactly what I wanted to see. Now, number 12 handicap maybe is only because of the distance on this hole as a mid-size par 4, but there's a lot of trouble down there pinching this fairway left and right. Most of the holes here are relatively easy off the tee. Coming into the green, you got another little oblong shape green there and they can tuck a pin in any one of those little nooks. It's a very, very cool design. It's 
a very awkward tee shot sitting next to this water hazard here, even though it really doesn't come into play too much off the tee unless you really yank it to the left. I push this one off to the right. Had the ball sitting above my feet here in the fluffy stuff again, and above your feet, you tend to yank it. I tried to compensate for it, but I didn't compensate enough. Hit it just over the flag up here on this hill. Had to chip it over the maintenance crew and down onto the green, and man, I got some bite on that chip shot. Chipped up to 10 feet here. Gotta roll in this par putt. Oh boy, that's not what we want to see rolling it all the way by, but hey, sometimes you can just walk it up, knock it in lefty, even if from five feet away for the bogey. The 14th hole is a nice 400 yard par four from the tips, and that water hazard we saw on the last hole is going to come into play here as it parallels it, going back the other direction. So if the wind is in play, this is the absolute other direction. A wider fairway as we're used to seeing here on the course that Bunker is kind of protected by the trees, but it will catch any ball that's rolling down the left-hand side. This green is a little bit of a plateau green. It is sitting up above, probably four or five feet above the fairway, so it's just a little bit elevated up there. And uh, with the condition that this golf course sits in the wintertime, it sits, oh my gosh, the con course conditions are absolutely pristine. Greens were running perfectly at about a 10 or 11, and they're really bouncing really firm. Had to take my drop off the cart path here and uh, didn't quite want to get wet from that uh, sprinklers there from the neighbor's yard. Was able to hit a gap wedge here to the center of the green and had a nice look for birdie to redeem those back-to-back -back bogeys. But that putt just didn't want to drop. Trying to get another birdie here to kind of salvage this round a little bit, but Hey, you know what? I will take the tap in par and get off that bogey train. Back to the last par three of the day. It's a relatively uh, normal green, I'd say here. And uh, you got that bunker shaped all the way around it. Kind of a cool little bunker design there. Nice eight iron or nine iron here to the middle of the green. But as was the, ten the tendency here, and has been the tendency for a little while now, I've been tugging my irons to the left. Nonetheless, I still had to get up and down here for my par, and I hit a little bit better chip shot than I have in a little while. Had a nice five foot here for par, and was able to roll that one in and get a little bit of momentum here heading into the closing stretch. Uh, two difficult par fours and a par five. The first is the hardest hole on the back nine with possibly the coolest shaped green on the entire course. A relatively easy tee shot is just going to ease off to the right hand side. All the difficulty here is on the green as it is a precision golf shot to the limit here. Look at this little baby crescent. The day we were playing it, the pin was all the way back right and man oh man that's an awkward cool shaped green. Luckily, the cut on the driver was working today. The hole flowed to the right, and it was a comfortable tee shot for me. Was able to air that one right down the middle. But the iron shot was another tug to the left. Gonna have to figure that one out here, as all of my iron shots tend to be going a little bit further left than I like. In an attempt to get up and down like I did on the last hole didn't quite hit as good of a chip shot and this time I faced about 25 feet for par and to be honest when it's this far away you really think you might be able to make it but you definitely don't want a three putt that one's close enough and uh, the left-handed golf putts were uh, working for me today so I tapped that one in for another bogey Last par five of the day, sitting almost 600 yards. It's going to be a almost guaranteed three-shot par five, especially with the uh, trouble down near the green. My tee shot's going to be landing somewhere near this fairway bunker, so it does come into play. Got to be able to hit it as straight as I possibly can. 
Coming into the green here, we got a multitude of fairway bunkers down the left to catch any kind of layup shot, and those two little trees does uh, do kind of help you as uh, the fairway kind of elevates up here to the green. It's a little bit of a blind plateau, so you got to know to not go further right than those two trees. Uh, here coming into the green, a really cool another shaped green surrounded by that riverbed that we saw earlier on the eighth hole. Plenty of difficulty here to this middle flag today. Try the trust the cut once again with there was a little bit of a double cross there and it ended up left on the hill left of the car path. But uh, it was a three shot par five to start. So just took a five iron here, which is a comfortable 200 yard club for me and tried to lay it up to a comfy distance. Uh, didn't go quite as far because the awkward lie and I had a full 120 gap wedge here to this flag and thought I actually connected with this one pretty good and gave myself a decent look for birdie here but I got up to the green which was a little bit blind and oh man it was just sitting right here on the fringe but I almost chipped one in earlier and I was thinking I could do it once again. Birdie would have been a great way to finish off this par five, especially after that not great tee shot. But you know what? A little tap in par that you can tap in with the wedge is a nice comfy way to finish as well. We got one more hole here and another dog leg to the right. You're going to have to deal with bunkers down the left. And I mean, do I even have to mention the layers of lakes all the way up to the green on the right hand side? Playing 410 yards from the tips, it is a kind of a mid-sized par 4, so you should be able to take your driver and just smash it on down uh, that fairly wide fairway. Off the tee, the fairway does sit at a comfortable angle, and it does make it look very, very wide. Another fancy-shaped green there, and we're going to be facing that back flag. There was that cut I was playing all day. It was comfy and I actually hit it through the fairway up into the hill just on the side of it here up in the rough. You can see the lies there are a little bit dirty, a little bit fluffy underneath and uh, here I thought this shot would actually bleed off to the, to the right but it's another pole with a gap wedge here and another 40 foot birdie putt but this one might just not go in. A little tap in par to finish the day. Thank you everyone so much for joining us today. I do appreciate it. Don't forget to smash that like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you again next time. Later.